Hello, I'm Taylor Householder. And I'm Mari Yoder. Presenting our 2011 National History Day project, Food Processing Debated, The Jungle. In the early 1900s, immigrants came to America seeking opportunities and freedoms that their home countries did not offer them. Some came to escape persecution that they had suffered for their race, religion, and political views. Many of these immigrants found work in the meatpacking industry. Because they needed the money to support their families, they were willing to work under the harsh conditions imposed upon them by their employers. It was because of these poorly treated immigrant workers that Upton Sinclair was sent by a socialist group to inspect Chicago's stockyards. These investigations led Sinclair to write his novel, The Jungle. After being rejected by six publishers for its gloom and horror unrelieved as said by a Macmillan consultant, Sinclair decided to publish his novel himself. He advertised his book in the socialist journal, Appeal to Reason and received 972 orders for the book. After Doubleday Publishing Company heard this figure, they agreed to publish The Jungle. As Upton Sinclair's writing spread through the American public, reform in the meatpacking industry became inevitable. America recoiled in horror. The shock and outrage caused by The Jungle left no room for reluctance on this issue. The public was eager for reform. They would not allow for their food to continue to be prepared in this unsanitary manner. The reaction was not out of concern for the workers, as Sinclair had hoped. Unfortunately, the people were more concerned with what was being served on their supper plates than the conditions the meatpackers had to endure on a daily basis. President Roosevelt read a copy of The Jungle and was disgusted with the book. He contacted the Agriculture Department, which persuaded him that the meat was carefully inspected. Roosevelt rebuked Frank Doubleday for publishing a book so offensive. Doubleday responded by assuring him that Sinclair's writing had been investigated and confirmed. Still unconvinced, Roosevelt launched a federal investigation. As written in the jungle, the conditions were shocking. This final investigation eliminated all doubts that, as said by Roosevelt himself, the method of handling and preparing food products is uncleanly and dangerous to health. Upton Sinclair was shocked by the public response to the jungle. He commented, I aimed at the public's heart and by accident I hid it in the stomach. He also mentioned the public responded the way they did, not because they cared anything about the workers, but simply because the public did not want to eat tubercular beef. Sinclair thought of himself as a novelist attempting to bring about social changes, not a social and economic investigator who documented injustices. He once said, you don't have to be satisfied with America as you find it, you can change it. I didn't like the way I found America some 60 years ago, and I've been trying to change it ever since. My cause is the cause of a man who has never yet been defeated and whose whole being is one all-devouring, God-given, holy purpose. His purpose, to change working conditions, not create a whole new way of industry. In the end, his novel brought about some of the biggest changes in food processing history, as well as impacting working conditions, his original goal. To avoid questioning and possible penalties, the original meat inspectors began to resign. All feared that the federal government would punish them for allowing diseased, rotten, and unclean meat products to be sold to the public. President Roosevelt promoted Nicholas Brooks and John McCullough. Out of so many corrupt inspectors, these men had been found taking their work seriously. Investigations proved that the workforce of the meatpacking industry was being mistreated and cheated out of their pay. The conditions of their workplace were unsanitary and dangerous. To speed up production, assembly line workers had to move faster, which caused them to be careless. It was not uncommon for a man to lose his finger in this process. Men working in the pickling rooms were often infected with skin diseases. Soap and water were scarce, so workers' hands were rarely clean. After all Roosevelt had heard, he knew he could not leave the meat industry as it was. On June 30th, he signed the Meat Inspection Act of 1906. This document made thorough inspections of the meat throughout the slaughtering and packing process mandatory. First, animals such as swine, cattle, veal, equine, and goats were inspected prior to slaughter. Second, carcasses were inspected after slaughter. Finally, cleanliness standards were set for slaughterhouses. On the same day, June 30, 1906, the Pure Food and Drug Act was also passed. While dealing mainly with accurately labeling medicines, it also dealt with the inspection of meat. Impure meat was no longer allowed to be sold to the public. Any dangerous imitation or replacement ingredients were outlawed. Meat inspection progress continued through the years. In 1910, the Bureau of Animal Industry Lab Research Center opened in Beltsville, Maryland. This group was in charge of meat inspection in the United States Department of Agriculture's Meat Inspection Division. 32 years later, the laboratory and sampling section of the Meat Inspection Division was created. Seven different labs across the country were established. These seven groups tested meat for foreign substances, excess water, and cleanliness of water used in processing. In 1957, after World War II, the demand for poultry products dramatically increased. The government passed the Poultry Products Inspection Act, requiring that poultry be inspected in areas of large consumption, such as cities. 
Today, America has the most humane slaughtering methods in the world. In other countries, slaughter is often daunting and appalling. The Humane Methods of Slaughter Act of 1978 required that animals not used for religious purposes were to be slaughtered humanely as described in the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act of 1958. In 1967 and 1968, the Wholesome Meat and Wholesome Poultry Act was passed which required that meat and poultry products meet federal inspection standards. In 1993, the Food Safety and Inspection Service required nutrition labeling on all raw meat and poultry products. These labelings tell everything from what is in the meat to the sell-by date. Roy Vogt, store manager at a local giant food store, said that they take these precautions not only to ensure public safety, but also to make sure people get what they're paying for. The Food Safety and Inspection Service has organized a recommended step-by-step -step process in which the meat is dealt with in meat processing plants in the United States. The FSIS breaks it down into nine processing categories. The first step is slaughter. Second is the raw meat, which is not yet ground. Third is the ground raw product. Fourth is heat treated but not fully cooked. During this fourth category, the meat is not shelf stable. If a preserved product can be stored for long periods of time at room temperature, it is deemed shelf stable. The fifth is when the product is fully cooked. The sixth category is the secondary product, which inhibitors can now be considered shelf stable. In the seventh category, it is not yet heat treated. During the eighth category, the meat is cooked. Lastly, the product is thermally processed and is finally commercially stable. In 1994, after an outbreak which caused four deaths, the government began a program to test for the presence of E. coli, an adulterant found in raw beef. To prevent the spread of this pathogen, as well as others, tough safety programs, as well as zero tolerance checks, are part of any meat facility. Hand washing stations are readily available, unlike the facilities in the 1900s. Other preventative measures are also taken to protect against spreading diseases. Between 1996 and 2000, the Food Safety and Inspection Service created a rule entitled the Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point Systems. This focuses on the prevention and reduction of illnesses caused by pathogens found in the raw meat. This rule is now required in all slaughterhouses across America. These extra precautions have made America's food much safer and have prevented the food processing industry from reverting back to the way it was in the 1900s. Despite these new measures that have been taken to keep the food from impurities, it cannot be completely protected from all the possible mistakes that can occur during any of the processes that take place before the food is sold to the public. According to the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there were 26 confirmed E. coli outbreaks in 2010 that were caused by unsafe lettuce. In the same year, billions of eggs were recalled because of suspected salmonella. Because it was questionable if deli meats in Walmart stores could be contaminated with hysteria, 380,000 pounds of meat was recalled. Today, the Food Safety and Inspection Service, as well as many other groups across the country, work to ensure that meat and poultry is properly inspected and that Americans are receiving a wholesome, clean, safe, and properly labeled final product. The groups work every day to try to better America's meat industry. What started in 1906 as a simple man writing a simple book about immigrants working in some of the worst working conditions in the world brought our country to where it is today in the meatpacking industry. To the people who took their time to truly inspect the conditions, prepare the acts, enforce the acts, and try to better our country, America now has the safest food supply in the world.